And mine sounds like that. Oh, you have a button cool. for yours. I gotta. I I know how to use it quick, so all I right, just just calm down. <laughs> <laughs> just all right, man. All right. All right. I get it. You you get it. Ugh. We're uh we're we're inside the podcast right now. Are we now. on? We're rolling right wow, now. Oh nice. This is good. Yeah. Hey, so <clears throat> somebody uh commented on a picture today on uh, Instagram mm-hmm. and they said whose nose is bigger, yours or Jeremiah Watkins? <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to catch that comment. Or I not. did catch it and I was yeah, like yeah. I was going to men- I was going to comment back and then I was like, "You know what? I'm doing this podcast. I think we'll talk about it here." Yeah. I think the difference is I I've I'm more bulbous up here. Yeah, yours is more misshapen, if you will accept that as a <laughs> as an answer. But your face is also much smaller than mine, so okay. it probably reads as bigger. Right. I think if you had a big fat head like I did, it would just read like my nose. So okay. they're probably on the same spectrum. I've been told I have a very Roman nose because I have uh, this this bump yep. thing right here. And I know you've got a very uh, uh, statue of David type penis, so that's also. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does he know? I've seen shows. What? <laughs> you saw the deleted scenes. The deleted scenes from Kill Tony. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite Kill Tony moment where you've been on the show and you're like, we're having a good time? Because you've I, been a guest a lot. I, I, on do, that I, show. I, I actually quite enjoy doing that show. I think one time that was really fun was when Joe Rogan and I were on it judging. And, um, this dude was on, he was a comic and he seemed really on edge. Like he was going to try and fight either me or, and or Joe. Yeah. And all I kept thinking in my head was, wow, this is gonna be a bad day for you, buddy. Yeah. You, <laughs> Cause you, you do jujitsu, right? Yeah. And I used to box. So I'm like, and he was like right beside me, but I, I think he, he was starting to take shit real personal. And in yeah. my head I was like, I mean, I could tell you're a scrappy kid, but you're going to make some mistakes up here, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Against two very trained I, I, fighters. I, I, like I would let Joe go first. Yeah. It's just because it would be over much faster. And then way. I would just go, Oh, get him Russell. No, you'd play sax while we're doing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Some Kenny G. <laughs> no, yeah, you knew exactly what I, I was knew doing. Exactly too. That. And that's clarinet. So I really fucked that up. Yeah. It's, I, oh, I think that it might be uh the soprano, that long, uh, Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Uh, hey, hey, the long soprano. Hey, the long soprano. What's going on here? Kenny G's a really nice guy. I've ever met him. No, I actually would love to have him on this podcast. He's a really, really cool guy. Is he? Yeah, I've met him a few times. How did how did, how did that happen? How I don't it? know, but I met him at these award shows a couple of times, and then every time I'd see him, like, hey, Kenny, he's like, hey, man, how are you? I know he didn't remember me, but he replied like he remembered me. Yeah, and nice was guy. Always, he's a very nice guy. Yeah. He didn't have a sax on him, though, did he? No, no. I mean, he may have one locked and loaded Dude, if somewhere. He, if he had a pocket like sax. Like a retractable one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, like on a zip Like line. one of those weapons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm Kenny G. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> just like that's his. Uh, just women start just like flooding, like yeah, <laughs> the the arena that you're in. Because there was a song by Kenny G that I really liked, and I told him about it, and that's what made him like. I maybe because it was like a it was like an album cut, and I was like, you know what song I really like is what I go Esther because that song could really make me cry. He goes, it's about my grandmother. I'm so glad you caught that. And I'm wow. Like, and I'm like, it's a really great song. He goes, thanks, man. I'm sure he really appreciated that. Whenever, yeah, I'm sure everybody goes for Songbird, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. Just the, the hits, the yeah, classics. You know, and you're like, I'm going with that deep cut. Deep album cut, son. Yeah, I think, well, that makes sense that this is grandma. I, I don't meet too many. I only know one Esther who's a young person. Esther Koo? Yeah. Well, I actually know two Esthers, I guess. Pavitsky as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the name's making a comeback. I guess so. You don't meet that many very Jeremiah's either. No. Well, you got the blackest name in the game. Jeremiah Watkins. Jeremiah Watkins. Hey, yeah, what up? Yeah. Like when I first, when I, I, you know, I knew you and your name hadn't registered with your face yet. So sure. somebody was like, Jeremiah Watkins on the show. I go, who the hell is Jeremiah Watkins? And I kept picturing, um, uh, Jamar, Jamar. I kept picturing <laughs> yeah. Jamar neighbors and I'm like, yeah. who's the black guy that hangs around Jamar neighbors? I don't know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then, he must be one of Jamar's friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm in the wave and you know, I hang around, I have a lot of black friends. So yeah. I mean, and I you're a musician. It. Yeah. Would you consider yourself a musician turned comic or a comic turned musician? Ooh. Uh, I think that I... Technically, I've been doing music way longer because... But would you consider yourself a musician or a guy who just knew how to play sax? No, I definitely consider myself a guy who just happens to play sax because whenever I get around people who are like 
they went to college and they like are trained like in that way. I've 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 gotten a lot better like in the last five years because of the amount of shows that I played on like Kill Tony and the Comedy Jam and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. my chops have gotten way better. Yeah. But five years ago, it's just like it's not even. I, I was just a dude who played sax. You so know? That's good. Yeah. But you, you you DJ. I've been DJing for thirty four years. Dude. Started in eighty five. So long, I was I'm a, I'm a DJ turned comic. I guess. That's you've been to, so. But I'm doing stand up thirty years. Oh wow! I started in eighty nine. That's crazy. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. Who who are some of the uh, who's like your crew? Whenever you're starting out. Well, I started on Toronto, so um, anybody that I started with, you probably wouldn't know. Okay. Um, but <clears throat> um, Howie Mandel mm-hmm. is from Toronto, and we would, he would always be around. He would always show up in Toronto and do spots. Still at that time. And Harlan Williams had just left Canada to move here. Hey, bud, how you doing? Yeah, so and he was always a great guy. And Norm Macdonald also had just left when I started. I, I I came in right as this huge exodus happened from Canada, where you know Norm left and and uh, Howie left and and uh, Jim Carrey left. Yeah. And so there was a lot. I mean, there's a lot of. But the, that's gotta like as a as a young Canadian comic, you gotta see that and be like, oh, these guys are making it. This is like super inspiring. Uh, on or, a certain level, it is. Or is it because, more? Because I was just like, wow, these are all white guys that they all have so much in common with each other. And I was the <laughs> first only Indian guy doing it at that time. So I was just like, well, I, I in my head, I was like, don't get your dreams. Uh, don't 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 aspire to be that, buddy. Just try to make your just try to make a living. But because you were funny, did you stick out in a good way? Right, like you started like I start. No, I was pretty shit when I started. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was horrible. I had no clue. You gotta understand. I mean. Uh, you're from Kansas. Yep. So I'm sure, uh, without knowing much, uh, I'm almost sure that you have nobody in the entertainment business in your Correct. family. Yeah, absolutely. Or, or none. grew up around none. Absolutely nothing. Same. Yep. So you're just meandering your way through this business, and you're making mistakes like a regular guy would. You know, saying stupid things to people who there's so many. The, the problem is that the, there's people that grow up in this business and stay in it, and they control it. And then they forget that we're regular people who come in and speak like regular people. Yeah. And it's not until you're trained in the art of failure that you start curbing how you say things to certain people. And and that's probably one of my problems is that I refuse to do that. I'm like, look, you're a guy. I'm a guy. You're a girl. You're, you know, we're, we're the same people. We, we can just talk to each other like normal people. I don't want to be putting on this weird facade. Yeah. Facade. That's a good word. Facade. Facade. He's a new Muslim coming, Use coming up. Use it in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever do spelling bees? I did spelling bees as a kid. Did you really? Yeah. Are you asking me because I'm Indian and yep. we usually win those 100%. things? 100%. <laughs> um, no, I didn't. But my dad was an English major. So I'm sure he probably would love to have seen that from me. But it seems like there's, there's sort of a a type of person that does it nowadays. Yeah. It's, no, they're it's, in it's, it. a, it's, a, it's almost like a, a level of autism, I would think. Yeah, the way they focus and and just the way they deal with it. I remember because I went to uh, I went to nationals, uh, no regionals for uh, uh, so I was in uh, Kansas and I won my circuit or whatever you want to call it, and then I went to Texas and you won that because you knew to put the apostrophe in y'all. <laughs> Uh, I got, no, I actually got out on a word that I knew, but I was, it was the, the only time I remember in my life where I got stage fright and I was like, I, I like missed, I knew as I was saying, and I was like, this is wrong. This is wrong. But like my nerves took over and mm-hmm. I said it. it was, and as soon as you say it, it was one of those things you can't take it back. It's one mm-hmm. of the, the rules. I had that happen to me when I did a TV show in like 93. A stand up set? A stand up set on this, um, it was a show called, uh, Comedy at Club Fifty Four in Canada. And I Comedy was all, at Club Fifty Four, yeah. hosted by Ben Guyot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was opening, and Crazy Lenny was on. That was the headline. Crazy Lenny. Crazy Lenny Schultz. Oh, Lenny Schultz. You know Lenny Schultz. Yeah. You guys want to see Crazy Lenny go crazy? <laughs> it's almost unbelievable when you're like, I can't believe I was opening. You know, it's really strange. But uh, I, I, I froze on TV. So, so what do you remember the moment? Like, did you hang up on a joke? Did you hang up on because something didn't right, go well? Or right what? in the middle of the set, I started, I was like, huh. And I saw the cameras and I just started smiling. And I was like, oh boy, I can't remember anything. And then I even said to the guy hosting, I go, Ben, I, uh, 
I'm freezing. I uh, no, I'm I'm uh, uh, something. I just I called it out that I'm like I'm panicking, like kind of thing. Yeah. Did that get a laugh or did no? No, the audience just, was like, "What the hell is happening? Yeah, what's right now? going on?" And then he goes, he comes and goes, "Do your set, just do your set." So I did my set, and then they don't worry about it, and they cut it down. And if you ever see the set, you'll notice at the end I have this look on my face, like, "Ugh," I have this look, like, oh, "Man, I'm so embarrassed by by this." But they managed to cut it, and you can't tell that it happened. Do you still have the footage? It's on YouTube somewhere. It's I'm on wearing, YouTube. I'm wearing red pants and a black uh, sweatshirt. Oh, dude, that's my favorite about looking at sets from like the '90s and had a '80s. Full stuff, head of like hair. How loud? Solid head of hair. Yeah, man. Yeah. It was down here. It was down here. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> the hairline was down here. It was like about an inch or so lower. Nice. Yeah. Heck yeah, dude. You know what's weird? I think uh, I think Crazy Lenny Schultz is actually calling in the show right now. Oh, is he? Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing it right there on my oh, caller wow. ID. Uh, hello? Uh, Crazy Lenny Schultz? Hey, I want to talk to Russell Peters. Uh, yeah, you know, he's on Jeremiah Wonders right now, actually. Hey, hey, Lenny, what's up? Hey, I, you really suck that night, you, you fucking punk. Hey, you don't deserve the career you have, all right? You, you want to see Crazy Lenny go crazy? No, Lenny, I, I, we actually can't see it. It's on a phone call. It doesn't matter, you cocksucker. All right, I think we should hang up on Lenny. He's getting very aggressive. Uh, I mean... Fuck you! <laughs> okay, we just lost him. I had so many questions for him, but that's okay. You I sometimes got to move on. Crazy Lenny would seem to be a little... Uh, he's on edge. He's a little... He's on edge. Off his mint, off the rock. Mm, you know, you know. Is he still alive? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been from the grave. I don't know. <laughs> I, hope, I hope he's still alive. Yeah, I have no idea if... That, that was... anger will kill you. Oh, it's Lenny. <gasps> Shit. It's crazy Lenny. Oh my God, he's haunting us. Oh, I didn't know I was dead until you called it out. And now I'm here to haunt you, Russell Peters. We should really confirm if he's alive or dead. <laughs> Not that just fast lost him with again. it. <laughs> I'm so fast with it. Oh, I just, I have my own setup over here. <laughs> Did you know... Uh, you might want to play around with this because uh, there's the so so you're a DJ. If you hit the different buttons, mm-hmm. just like uh, it's different uh, vocal filters. So um, yeah, it's, it's the Beach Boys and the Medieval Monks. Yeah, baby, and take off that brazier, my dear. Wait, what? This is our first date. I don't want to see no panties. <laughs> you you don't want to see oh wait you mean like you want me to take the panties off or i want you the way you came into this world um in an amniotic sack filled with fluid and bring that umbilical over here <laughs> yeah it's been well it, my mother did save it in uh in this chester drawer over here don't worry baby i'll i'll show you an umbilical <laughs> are you referring to your penis as an umbilical cord maybe maybe not but wait <laughs> Teresa, what do you do? Get out of here. Hey, so listen. Um, I'm not (laughs) binary. I don't know what tuned to up is. Oh, so sing. Sing with that one. Uh (laughs) Yeah. Staying alive. Why is it echoing? Just staying alive is echoing? Does that just mean I'm trapped in a hole? No, staying alive is like uh, the Bee Gees. Staying alive! Yeah, so I want one of these now. I know, right? Oh, because I'm strong to the finish. Whoa, and I eat me spinach. Whoa, Popeye. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of yours. I loved uh, Robin Williams' uh, rendition of you uh, in that hit movie. Uh, thanks for calling the show. Uh, what have you been up to lately, Popeye? I've been fucking olive oil. You that? Oh, really? Yeah, I put some weight on her. Her knees don't look like she's smuggling walnuts into the country anymore. Well, good because she was a uh, she was a little bit too skinny for my taste. I'm into you know you know girls who are a little bit thicker than olive oil. You're probably like Brutus with a wig. Probably like British. Brutus. Brutus. Oh, with a wig. Oh, I love him. Yeah. He's you know nice and beefy. That's how I like my ladies. Nice and beefy. I'm with you, but uh, sometimes you gotta take a skinny bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, did your forearms get so big from finger blasting olive oil, or how did you get that? The uh, left one was from finger blasting. The right one was from jacking off okay. while I was finger blasting. <laughs> that's now that's pretty impressive to be jacking off while you're finger blasting. So. And I had uh, figured out a technique to kick a can of spinach up, but while it's in the air, I kick it again. It opens and it falls into my mouth. 
Wow. I mean, that's a pretty skillful thing that you've got going on there. How did you, I don't even know how you teach yourself that. Well, I'm taught by the sailor man. How the fuck else would I teach myself? I don't know. Also, this is kind of shocking to my childhood, Popeye, because I'm used to not hearing you swear and you talking about finger blasting women and, and also jacking off. Like this is, this is pretty graphic language for you. I'd say is, do you feel like you're free now that you're not being televised? Interesting fact about me in the seventies during all the, uh, you know, the times I wasn't working, I was part of a musical group called the uh, Village People. You were in the Village People? I was the sailor. You were the sailor? I never put that together. I know, because I had, uh, I stopped working out on the forearm, so I would blend in with the group. Oh, okay. So you had to tone down your uh, your thickness a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I was thick in other places that they quite enjoyed. Oh, okay. So that wasn't just a spinach can you were smuggling. Okay. Yeah. I like the way you're thinking, kid. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Popeye, thanks for uh, hanging out with uh, Russell and I. Hey, Russell, did pleasure. you? Did Russell? Did you have any questions for Popeye? Um, I, he's answered more things than I've ever imagined him to uh, to answer. So I'm I'm quite pleased with this. All right. Well, nice uh, meeting you, Popeye. Uh, on, on behalf of Lenny Schultz, go fuck yourself, Russell. <laughs> okay. All, all ties together. <laughs> him and Lenny are in cahoots, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Uh, you, uh, whenever you walked into my apartment, because I live in a uh, a one bedroom apartment, and, is it uh, one bedroom? Yeah, it's one bedroom. It, you know, it's so much. How how many square feet is this? I don't even know, because it's bigger than I expect these things to be. Oh, it sounds like an arrogant rich guy coming in here. No, no, no. I was gonna actually ask you when was the last time you've been in like an apartment like this. I haven't been in one of these. Like this is to me is like a real one. <laughs> Do you know what this I mean? Is, like, do you feel you're like you're like among the people right now? Yeah, I'm like, so this is uh, this is real. So th- this is what, it, and I'm like, you, you know, in your head, you're like, well, I could never live like that. And I'm like, I could live like this. This yeah. is quite nice, actually. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, what what was your living situation like uh, in in Canada? Did you grow up like uh, middle class family, lower class, upper Work, class, working class, lower class, working class? You know, mm-hmm. in a townhouse community. So uh, it was a house like this. Yeah. Know? Basically, we had one bathroom for the four of us. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Canada, so you have a basement, as you probably do in Kansas. You have yep. basements. I actually miss having a basement. Your basements are great because they'd stink like musty cunt. And uh, yeah, but it <laughs> that's was what just... I've always said about basements: <laughs> <laughs> the old musty cunt. Yeah, coming to a city near you, the new musty cunt tour, twenty nineteen. I can't wait to see that picture. And Bush is opening for them. Hello. <laughs> um. Yeah. So we just grew up in a townhouse and. Uh, it wasn't anything special, mm-hmm. but everybody lived the same way, so you didn't know. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you knew, right? You didn't you d- feel like less than anybody else because you were like everybody else is in the same situation. Yeah, so you're you, like, you have no context for it whenever yeah, it's like, like, oh, like right, you're good. around everybody else that's in a similar situation. And yeah. then there was like people, like you would see people, like oh, see that guy, yeah, his dad owns a, his dad has a, like this car, and you're like wow, they must be rich, like, and it was like a fucking Monte Carlo or something. Yeah, you know what I mean, it wasn't like. Wow, a what? And like you didn't know any, I didn't know any foreign cars at that time. Yeah. We drove an AMC Hornet. An AMC Hornet? A 1977 AMC Hornet. Yeah, dude. And my dad made the mistake of asking a seven-year-old boy, what color should I get? And I said, orange. And my dad got an orange 1977 AMC Hornet station wagon. Oh, yeah. With no power steering, uh, black vinyl interior, no air conditioning. I think was a tank. Dude, you're bringing me back to uh, some of uh, my first cars uh, when the power steering would go out and I just have to crank oh, yeah, 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 that I, wheel. Yeah, I think maybe that's what happened to Papa. He might have had a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. His power steering just went out. Power steering went out and then he would just finger blast all of with the other Just finger. like, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I got this. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Did you say something about Olive's pussy again? I mean, we, yeah, we might have casually mentioned it, Popeye. I'd appreciate it if you keep the bitch out of your mouth. Thank you very much. Well, that's, I, that's respectful of you, but also not. Only I can call her a bitch. She's my bitch. Okay. All right. I don't want to get in a fight with Popeye or Russell for that matter. So yeah, I want to stay out of this I don't want to fuck with Popeye. Are you crazy? No. Yeah. Yeah. When did you start doing uh, jujitsu? I started doing jujitsu in like the, in 97. Okay. I was doing Japanese jiu-jitsu when I found I found out now that it was Japanese jiu-jitsu because it was all standing up. Excuse me. It's all the same oh, move. Brazilian is more rolling and yeah, stuff, Brazilian. Right? Well, these guys are Brazilian guys. Uh, Brazilian, Brazilian guys. They were Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys, but they were teaching it to me in a Japanese form standing up. Okay. So it's all the same move standing up. And I did that 
on and off for like three years. And then uh, I choked the guy out one night in 2000 on the street in Toronto. Um, what led to that? It was an accident. It was a. <laughs> it was an accident. He fell into my arms. Accidentally. No, no. Two guys jumped on me. Uh, one guy jumped on my oh. back. One guy jumped on my side. And the guy on my side, I just did this thing and he ended up in front of me. So I. I put him in a guillotine. Wow. Uh, now, then, were they, they they were trying to jump you? Just, no, this is where the misunderstanding came in. The uh, guy on my back jumped off and ran around and was like, Russell, that's that's me. And and I was like, oh, shit. And then I, when I let him go, I didn't realize how long I had choked him out for. And uh, excuse the smell you're about to get. I, uh, <laughs> I was wondering what that sound was. <laughs> I farted. I thought you stomped. <laughs> <laughs> I did, out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I literally th- felt like <laughs> the floor shake. Oh my God, is there a tremor? I literally was like, "Is there an elephant in here? What's Ash going on?" Ash tremors again. Ash tremors coming to a theater near you. <laughs> Kevin Bacon is back, but this time the tremors are coming out of his ass. Tremors. Tremors was up early. Batters not included. Bisexual. Bisexual. Um. Yeah. So that's what happened. Then so, I stopped. So you, I choked him out. He passed out. He was actually a friend of mine. He passed out. So he was just like messing around. They were just messing yeah, around. Yeah, but you. you know, I'm and I was just like. But Ooh. you went into automatic defense, defense mode. mode. It was like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> and then and then I when I let him go, he fell face first into the sidewalk with his hands. He was out cold. His hands were beside him. Did he get seriously hurt? Yeah, he knocked, knocked out all his front teeth. What? There's just blood everywhere, and I was like, "Oh my god, I killed my friend!" And I ran to the hot dog vendor, and I bought like six bottles of water, and I'm pouring them on him. I'm like, "Oh my god, no, don't die!" Oh no! And then I ended up having to buy him new teeth, and uh, this was 19 years ago now. How expensive was that? It was like two grand, 2,500 bucks, two grand. I didn't have that money back then, but that's actually pretty good. I thought you were gonna say way more. It was than 20 that. years ago almost, right? But still, I mean, I. Dude, I'd think. Well, no, teeth. I got a deal because there was this comic friend of mine whose brother was the a hot di- dog vendor knew a guy. <laughs> yeah, there was He's a like, com- I'm gonna hook you up. All right. There was a comic friend of mine whose brother was a dentist, and he uh, and he called his brother, and his brother hooked it up for me. So he didn't charge me what he should. He, I think it was like a five thousand dollar job. <laughs> you, you, call, you call you call mafioso style. You're like, uh, hey, you know that favor? Yeah. Yeah, I need that to happen tomorrow <laughs> morning. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Teeth. I need no fucking teeth. We need no teeth. Hey, and don't skimp. We need legit ivory. He's a good friend. Good friend. Big teeth. Big teeth. Fucking movie screens give, on this guy. Give him some chompers, all right? We want people to look and turn and be like, that guy's got a mouth on him. I want you to IMAX this fuck. All right? <laughs> Keep going bigger. We want the 3D experience. No, you know what? Make it 4D. What's that one where they have the uh, seats that vibrate? 4D, yeah. I went and saw one of those uh, movies uh, that was 4D. And then I didn't realize halfway through the movie, I had not paid for the upgrade. Nah. So, I was just, <laughs> so I was just sitting there. I'm like, when's it going to kick in? And I see like uh, like people around. I'm like, is my chair broken? My wife goes and checks. And she's like, I think our seats are messed up. They're like, no, you didn't pay the extra $20 per ticket. And we're like, okay, we're good with the normal seats. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. It's, I did it once. It was actually pretty cool. Yeah? I quite enjoyed it. Yeah? Yeah, but you got to pick the right movie. It's like, you know. I saw, yeah, I was watching uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I think, I think it might have been one of those yeah? that I saw it in. It was fun. I don't necessarily need it all the time. You know? No, no. It's just more one of those fun things. Yeah, it's not going to be one of those good movies for like, you know, the help or something like, you know. Oh my God, they're running. <laughs> <laughs> just like the most. I'd love to see a, like, yeah, a 4D like, like for like the most sappy, like sincere movie. Yeah. What are one of those movies like where it's just a, it's a guy and he's sitting in place, you know, like it's like the Stephen Hawking story or something. And you're like, <laughs> you just you, literally every now and there your chair just goes. <laughs> Hello, thank you, thank you. The universe is expansive. Have you heard my theory of relativity? Well, it's all relative. You know what I was thinking. I was wondering when is the next time I'm going to be able to bust a nut. A nut busting. It's a simile for ejaculation. Like that's got to be a hard uh, offer. Like like Stephen Hawking having to get his wife in the mood because he went through a couple wives, you know. So he was a sexual guy, obviously, and he had a bunch of kids. But yeah. like, how does he get his wife 
in the mood. You know what I mean? She's got to be like a uh, like a science geek or something. She's like, got to be. She's like, got to be a little bit of a fangirl, yeah, you know? Yeah, tell me about the black hole. <laughs> you know, tell me about it, baby. I will tell you everything I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, just, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Time is a construct when you think about it. Oh, yeah, that's good. Did you say stick it in my construct? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. Why Why not? <laughs> I am raging and ready to go. You can't tell because my body's not moving. But <laughs> doing, 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 doing. <laughs> Dude, when did you start, uh, like, really doing, like, these world tours that you're going on? Because I feel like it's it's interesting. I, you're one of those comedians that you type in on YouTube, and there's a bunch of different clips of you performing a lot of different places. And I feel like you, you're kind of, like, known as that comic who's, like, a world traveler. So when was that shift in your career that... That I think, started happening. I think 2007 is when it really started going to that next level with it. I was always performing in other countries. Mm -hmm. Even when nobody knew who I was, I would, because <clears throat> I'd be... Uh, Are you I'd, fluent in other languages? or Not even one. Oh, okay. Just English. Because you're very good at... Faking. Accents and faking it. Oh my like God. You, I, like, I, like you pick up little things like, and I see you like using it with the crowd and I'm like, I'm like, how much does... You have a lot of reference points. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I fake it. It's great, but it's 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 more of a fun thing for me to fake it, like yeah. just to keep people on their toes, yeah, so they don't talk shit about you in their language in front of you. Sure, yeah. But when we were in, we were in Hong Kong last year on tour, and uh, we were at the night market, me and two of my uh, security guys, and the lady selling these. So excuse me, it's been a long day. <laughs> um, the lady selling these fake like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, all these kind of scarves, but I wanted to get some. <laughs> Yeah, you heard me. Yeah, that's right. When you need a Louis Vuitton scarf, you got to get one. Yeah, so I, I'm trying to buy these. And then uh, I know some words in Cantonese, right? And then I know how to fake the look and the sound and the body language of it all, right? Which is really the most important part when you're doing these things. It's about how comfortable you look doing it. So she said, uh, she said the price. I go, how much is that? And she goes, out to 1800 and I go, no, no, I cheesing. I called her crazy, right? Yeah. And she goes, ah, cheesing, no, cheesing, I'll do cheesing. And then she had this whole conversation with me in Cantonese. And I kept, I don't know what I was doing or saying, but I kept saying words in Cantonese. Yeah. Just at key times. And she thought I knew how to speak Cantonese. Sure. And then my two guys were like, what the fuck just happened? And I got these scarves down to 700 bucks. Yeah. And I was like, 700 Hong Kong. And I'm like, I don't know what just happened, but I really wish we had filmed that because it was amazing. You had like an out of body experience. Yeah, even I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" They go, "How did I do that?" They were like, "When did you start learning? To, when did you start speaking Cantonese?" Like, I don't speak Cantonese. I knew three. I said three words, and the rest of it were noises of me faking the fucking faking Dude, the funk. That's some that's some stand up comedy confidence right there. Just like staying in the pocket and being like, yeah. "No, I got." Yeah, this. I was like you when you when you get in when you get in your characters, you don't break, which is quite impressive to me. Oh, yeah? It's always impressive. I'm like, how the fuck does he do that? Well, I, I don't have that confidence to stay in a character that I, long. I have this weird shut off with my brain where as soon as I am like locked in, I'm just that I'm just that person now. Yeah. But like uh, I have a lot of uh, people that are like, like, how do you stay in it? And I'm like, I, I think it's a weird brain. My brain w works weird. I literally have a shut off valve where I'm like, oh, no, I just am that person now. Yeah, and there's like no going back. I can do it like for moments, but yeah, not yeah. for the entirety. Right. Yeah, like like if I had to do it in a movie, I could do it, but I because you know it's going to be short bursts of it. My wife actually really liked uh, your show on Netflix, uh, The Indian Detective. Ah, she watched fun. that series. Yeah, it was fun. You didn't watch it though. I didn't watch it. No, no and it's on the. She was, go, she was watching it while I was. It's, it's going to be on the GFM network too, the Go Fuck Myself network, because that's apparently oh. what you just told me. Whoa. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> Jeremiah just told Russell to eat a dick. How is Russell going to respond? Get them lined up and salted. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what's up. Just salting dicks. <laughs> okay, 
Uh, a, a little bit more, please. I like them briny. <laughs> briny? <laughs> That's a, such a gross descriptive <laughs> word. I like my penises briny. And a nice salty brine. <laughs> Can I get a, a, a soft brine on this penis? A over soft here? brine. A soft brine. <laughs> a soft brine on this hard dick. Yes, please. Yes, please. That would be marvelous, actually. Muffless. Have you, now you've done a lot of comedy specials and stuff like that. Uh, what, like, what's one of your more, I guess, special moments, like, that you filmed something where you walked away and you're like, because I know every special that you do, it's like, supposed that you to be take, special. it's supposed to be special. I know which ones are not special. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, I can watch back and go, what the fuck was I doing? Yeah. I rushed through that. What was I, what was I thinking? Mm-hmm. It gets harder nowadays because... They want a special from you every year or every two years. And it's a, it's that's such not a hard model. It, it, it is because you can't make something special in that short amount of time. Yeah. You can make something good, pretty good. Yeah, but it's not going to be like a special. Like you see how Ellen's new special is really great and it's a special. Well, Ellen hasn't done a special in about 15, 20 years maybe. Yeah. So she had, uh, a, a, it, it becomes special at that point. Of course. Because people haven't seen, people are like shocked to even yeah. see. Yeah, and then it kind of turns out to be good. Now, would it still be that good if if she had like four specials before that every every couple of years before that? Yeah, she was cranking them out like her TV show. So yeah, like, yeah, let's do another special this year. Yeah, so it, it's it's a tough it's a tough call, but you know, um, the special that that blew me up, so to speak, mm-hmm. was the one I shot in two thousand and three, uh, and I hadn't done a special in six years at that point. The last one I did before that was in ninety seven. So. I had six years to get that material ready. Yeah. So yeah, that's going to be a good special. Yeah. You know, and then the next one I did was in 06 and that was a good special. And then 08 and that was probably the best one, the one in 08 uh, next to the 03 one. Mm -hmm. And then we did 2010, we did 2013, we did 2016 and here we are 2019 and I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing. Sure. On to the next one. On to the next Next one. On on to to the the next one. On on. On to the on to the on to the next. You're a huge hip hop fan. I am, but Uh, not not current. Not current. Who are some of the like like? Let's get into it. Who are like? And this is you're gonna instantly surpass my knowledge. But for the (coughs) listeners out there, they're gonna appreciate your knowledge of hip hop. Who are like? Who are your guys? Who are your MCs? Um, Well, funny enough, one of my favorite MCs and a good friend of mine who's actually staying at my house at this very moment is Big Daddy Kane. Um, so he's here at the crib. Who was it in Montreal that you brought? I don't even remember who it was that you brought, uh, on for Melly Mel. Yep. Melly Mel. I brought Melly Mel with me to do, uh, to do the comedy jam in Montreal. Like we have Russell as one of our guests and Russell's like, he brings Melly Mel and he's like, I'm going to get Melly Mel to go. And we're like, what? And yeah. And you guys did white lines for him, right? Mm-hmm. That was pretty dope. It it was pretty dope. Yeah. The, like it wasn't a huge venue. There's probably 200. Maybe. Maybe there. Yeah. In the catacombs yeah. in Montreal. Yeah. And just it was chaos. Pretty, it, was dope. it was awesome. I love shit like that, though. You know, just like. Well, it's so special. Like, only those people get to experience it. Yeah. Like, uh, maybe about 2007, I would say. Uh, 07. Must have been 07. I was in uh, at the Arlington. Not the Arlington Improv. Uh, there used to be one in. Uh, a different one in Dallas. Okay. And uh, across from it. Was it Harvey Floor Bangers, I think it was called? Or <laughs> Dueling Pianos type place? Oh, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? One of those Dueling Piano places. So anyway, No Doubt came to my show. All of them. The whole group. Gwen, Tony, Tom. Were they all seated together? Yeah. It's yeah. like... They were all together. They because Tony Canal, the bass player, is an Indian guy. He's a good friend of mine. The, and could, were they in eyesight, uh, like in your eyeline on the stage? I, I could see them. They were s- kind of sitting off to the side, so they could dip into the office if they if, if it got chaotic. If it got too much, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they come to the show, and then because uh, they had a they had a concert the next night, and uh, I go, hey, I'm gonna. They, we, we all get drunk, and then I go, hey, let's go to the piano bar next door. <laughs> so we all go to the piano bar. Gwen dips out because she's you know she's Gwen. She doesn't need to be bothered by strange people yeah and if she has a concert the next night she might want yeah, to rest her voice whatever yeah, she, yeah, I, yeah. I get that so yeah. me and tony and tom and i think maybe the drummer too we all went over to the piano bar and the piano bar has a guitar setup and a drum setup and then tony's with me and he's like dude don't 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 uh don't don't call me up there because i'm hammered i can't play anything right now i go cool i got you i kept hiding him behind me and then uh so the 
the piano band recognizes that No Doubt's in the in the room, so they start playing No Doubt songs. Oh no! And then Tom, the lead guitarist, just jumps up with them, grabs the guitar, and you hear ding 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 ding. And I was like, holy shit! And they start singing, "I'm Just a Girl." And I'm just a girl. Yeah, and he's playing along. It was so wild. I was I was pretty it was one of one of my favorite moments too. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so cool because you being like the I feel like the longer that we're in comedy like you start crossing paths with musicians it's like this weird like well, because mutual they, the, respect the uh the the i think the uh the stereotype is that all musicians want to be comics and all comics want to be musicians yeah and i think that's a pretty fair assessment sure like portugal the man has been do you know that that group no they're this uh they're super fun like uh alternative rock group they've been hanging out at the comedy store lately and they've got like a bunch of songs are like really big on the radio right mm-hmm. now. And they're just, they just have been recording a new album in LA and they're just like, yeah, we just love the comedy store. Yeah. It's hang a good out. hang awesome. for them because they're around artists, yeah, like-minded artists and they're not going to get harassed too much. Yeah. 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 Good, good treatment. Yeah. It's kind of like, Oh, it's cool. They treat us like one of them. Yeah. Uh, let's get into this next segment. It's called fanning out. I'm listening. Fanning out. Questions from fans. So you saw that post, uh, which you commented uh, at the top of the show uh, about, you know, about our noses. About our noses. <clears throat> you know, it's we interesting. We decided, about, I guess, I guess me. I have two finger nostrils. Do you? Two fing. I can get two fingers in there. Oh no, I can't do that. Really? I mean, maybe I've never. T- Come on. You do. Well. I really, I really gotta. Yeah, it's pretty wild, right? <laughs> I could really get something in there if I need to. <laughs> Dude, one time I gave birth out of my nose. Did you? Yeah, it was twins. It mm-hmm. came out. I raised them. They were nine pounds each. Beautiful. Oh. I did give them away. I could not raise it them. It happens. A single yeah. mom. I couldn't. Yeah, I was a single mom. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't raise them in this apartment. Yeah, no, not not in this area. It's, not a, in ba- this. it's a bad area. <laughs> <laughs> did you, were, when you, when you were parking, were you like, what I you didn't doing? park. I brought one of my, uh, one of my buddies with me. I was like, I'll sit in the car. Oh, Yeah. I was like, I, listen, I said, listen, I need gas. He's out, he's out in the car right now? I said, I need gas. Go fill the tank and then uh, come back. He goes, I'm just going to sleep in the car. I go, okay, cool, whatever. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah. On that next level, son. Yeah, son. Yeah, son. Word be. Uh, at Dylan underscore O'Brien, where is the favorite place you've DJed and why? Favorite place I've DJed? I know I've been DJing for 34 years. That's yeah, a that's tough call. That is tough. But, I, you know, <clears throat> if you want to go with as of recent... Um, I did Motown Mondays in Silver Lake one night okay. about a year ago, and I had a great time. It was all Motown. You can only play records that were ever on Motown. It doesn't have to be a Motown, like a Temptations type track. It mm-hmm. could be Michael Jackson because he was on Motown. Sure. Or you could play songs that have like a, a mashup. So I played this one. I had this mashup of um, Nirvana and Michael Jackson. Oh, and I played it, and they're like, "That's not Motown." And then Michael starts singing. And they're like, "Fuck! How did he sneak this one in?" Wow. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I like doing shit like that where you really gotta, you really gotta put your DJing chops together. Yeah. How? I mean, how long did it take you? I guess to kind of hone DJing, where you got to a point where people were coming up to you and being like, "Dude." That was a dope set. You know what I mean? Like versus like you just being a guy, you know, a lot of times like at some parties, it just happens to be a dude who's okay and he's just in the corner and nobody really says anything to well, him I, the I, entire night. I used to make mixtapes in high school. So really? Yeah. Just for my friends. I wouldn't sell them or anything. So I'd be like, yo, can you make me a mix? And I'm like, yeah, okay. I would just do it because it was fun practice for me. And yeah, then it would be like, oh, what songs do you want on them? You know? And I'm like, do you have this? Do you have this? Yeah, I got that. I got that. And and then I'd be like, I don't have that, but I could borrow it from my friend. You know, that's how it was back in the day. Dude, that see, that's what I kind of miss about like when whenever uh, I was growing up, I would have how old to are record. You now? I'm 30. Yeah. Right. So I You're had, my career. Heck yeah, dog. <laughs> I'm Russell's career. <laughs> in human form. Here we go. I am a one bedroom apartment. Hello. <laughs> Making it. <laughs> I uh I miss having to uh, you know, buy cassette tapes at the store mm-hmm. and listen out on the radio for the songs and have to record it in the moment there's something and if you got it because and sometimes i'd even call the station and you try to describe what the song was there's no shazam or anything oh yeah no you you were shazam yeah you were shazam you're trying to sing it and the dj's like dude i don't know what you're talking about and you're like ah it was worse it was worse when you were a dj because you'd have to go to the record store and a lot of the times it was like, yo, I heard this song the other night, but the DJ wouldn't tell me what it was. And he goes, what was it? And I was, I was like, it, it went to, bam, 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 
and he's like, do it again. And then you, you just knew he was fucking with you after a while. Like, again, yeah. hey, come here. Listen to this. <laughs> he ended up, he ended up doing, bam, 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 bam. And, and everyone's like, <laughs> Tara, come over here. I think yeah. we need another set of yeah, ears. Yeah. Go Hold ahead on. and go. Go try to do it again. Yeah. Uh, just time higher pitch. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that. That's awesome. Uh, at illustrated underscore skills. What's your favorite moment meeting a hip hop legend? Who was it and why? I'm a B-boy, painter, and fan of both your comedy. If you answer this question, I'll paint you both in a B-boy stance. Word, son. Okay, let me give you two answers on this. Um, since you're a B-boy, you'll appreciate this. I hope you're watching or listening. Um, Crazy Legs from Rocksteady Crew came to my show last year in August at uh, Forest Hill Stadium in Queens. And I was bugged the fuck out because I was so in awe. Like, this is a guy that literally... You know, forget the music. This guy was very instrumental in the way I, I, I am today. Like he, he made. I saw him b-boying and flash dance, and I was like, "Yo, what the fuck is this?" I saw it in Wild Style. I was like, "Yo, that's the same guy from Wild Style. This is amazing. You could cross over. If I get really good at this, I could get into movies." Like, and uh, so he came to the show, and he's a cool ass dude, and he's a legend in the game, and so so crazy legs from Rocksteady Crew is when I really fanned out, and that was just a few months ago. Wow, that's I mean, a, we text each other all the time now. It's kind of cool. That's a, that's got to be a cool feeling. It's it's very bizarre. Or like when like you know some of your legendary you know like uh, I was in North Carolina a week ago, and Terminator X from Public Enemy was at the show. That's you know that's that's a guy who I would <laughs> and I was like yo, and every time I see him, I kept going step aside for the flex Terminator X. I kept doing that too, and he was like, "All right." He's like, "Yeah, I've heard that a, oh, yeah, a few. Yeah. I've heard that a few." But then I started doing like a B side cuts on him. I was like, "Hey, it all comes down to money." And he's like, "Okay." And okay. He's like, "All right, so you know, okay, yeah, 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 yeah." Yeah, I was like, "All right, good. There we go." He's like, "I got to introduce you to my friend Jeremiah Watkins." Yeah, and then I went. <laughs> 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 uh, at hot breath pod, uh, there at are what at hot breath pod. Oof. Yeah, here we go. There uh, on Instagram, there are countless stories of you generously helping out comics. Who helped you on the way up? Who helped me? Fucking nobody. <laughs> That's why I help people because yeah. nobody helped me. I didn't get any advice. I didn't get any. Um, I don't know. Just nobody really gave a shit. I got. I got more. I got shit on more than I got helped. Wow. A lot. Like a lot. And I can remember every person who ever did or said something negative to me, which was probably almost everybody. You know, I had like good friends in the game who were not in the game. They were just comics alongside me. We were all we were all, you know, peers. And then I remember one time being at this uh, at Yuck Yucks in Toronto mm -hmm. and I had just shot my second special in 97. And I'd only been doing stand up eight years at that point. Um, did you order that fly for me or was that, <laughs> was that for later? <laughs> I ordered that for you. Thank you. I was like, hey, we got, an, we got uh, an Indian guy coming in. We got the first Indian guy coming in in my, <laughs> like, my one-bedroom apartment. I've only seen them on UNICEF commercials. Maybe we should get more flies for them. <laughs> Can you distend your belly? <laughs> so I, I remember I, I just shot my second special. And I'm not like bragging about these things. I'm just doing them. I'm, right. not, I'm, not, I'm not expecting you're, any of yeah, this stuff. You're, yeah, you're not I'm that guy. A, I'm as in shock as everyone else is that I'm doing this, yeah. right? And uh, and I see this comic who I thought I was cool with. And I go, hey, man, let me buy you a drink. He goes, cool. So I didn't drink at the time either. I was like, let me buy you a drink. Yeah, okay, sure, go ahead. So I buy him a beer or something, and we're staying there. And uh, and he goes, I can't wait to see you fall. And I said, what? And he goes, you got too much too soon. I go, cool, all right. So I just walked away from the guy. I'm like, the fuck says that? Like, what? What like what are you mad at, dude? Like, dude, that that's straight out of like a movie, like a villain line. Oh yeah, I, I had I had all that kind of shit happen to me back then, and, and I remember this one comic got a TV show in Canada, and uh, he was hosting the this that the club that night, and there was there was a guy headlining, and then there was a uh, two openers, me and another guy. We were just doing spots. And this guy's hosting. He goes, "All right, let me tell you about the show tonight. Three comics, two I like, one I don't." Um, your headliner is blah 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 blah. The guy, other guy, Abra, and then Russell Peters, and then, and I was like, wow, what a dick, right? And then he introduces me, and as he introduces, you know, he shake hands. He shakes my hand, leans in, and goes, "I have a talk show coming up in the fall. If you ever want to be on it, I suggest you mention it." And I go, 
Right. And I go, give it up for, I don't want to say his name. Give it up for, what's his face? He's apparently got a talk show. Anyway, and I just went into my act. Yeah. And I was like, wow, what a dick. Dude. I worked a, a weekend with uh, Dom Herrera. I've, I've worked I love m- Dom. M- multiple weekends with him. And every time, one of the guys we were on the show with, he did not like. Right. And uh, he goes, I it. can't see Dom not liking somebody. It's how much, pretty rare. It's how much of a rare. cock do you have to be for Dom to not that, like you? I think that Dom didn't like his act. Okay. He, he goes, uh, he, he goes, uh, give it up for, uh, you know, so and so and Jeremiah. He goes, one of them shows a lot of promise. The other one, a little hacky, a little, uh. <laughs> you do it every, every show. You know, but Dom can get away with that and still be endearing. About oh, it. I know. So likable. These guys were just dicks about it. Yeah. And like while I'm on stage, well, they're standing back there talking shit about me. And one of my friends was sitting right there and goes, Oh, Yo, you know those guys? I go, Yeah. He goes, They were all talking shit about you the whole time you were on stage. I go, That's fucked up. But you know what's cool about, you, you know, you, you, you know, paying it forward to with basically nobody paying it forward to you. It makes those actions so much more meaningful. That, well, because that I just know how that. shitty it felt. Right. And I'm like, why would you do but that to somebody? Dude, but there, it's, it would be just as easy or actually way easier to be like, no, everybody crapped on me on the way up. I'm not going to give anybody anything. Go like fend for yourself. But since you do that kind of stuff, like there's a lot of stories out there, you know, of you like, you know, buying comic shoes, giving them clothing or, or watches or just, just treating them like amazingly whenever they open for you on the road. And it's like super cool. You got to, you know, I mean, I, I'm, making, I'm making a lot of money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and I know how much you guys are making. So I always make it a point. If we're working a club, Mm -hmm. I let the club pay you whatever bullshit they're going to pay you. And then I just take money out of mine and add it on to it because you're not going to be able to live off 500 bucks for a weekend. You know what I mean? Like nobody's going to fucking be able to live like that. That's very true. Yeah. So I always add on to it because I'm like, it's it's, it's an unfair game. Like I get that I'm a draw there and I get that I, but it, they should, they should pay you a little bit more knowing that, you know, the club sold out all weekend. You guys aren't fucking suffering, you know? Yeah. I, we, uh, you booked, uh, you and Jamar and I still haven't Jam- filled that date yet. Dude. So funny. Me and Jamar, uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to open for, for Russell and Russell asked me, uh, he goes, uh, so, uh, do you think you or Jamar should open the show? I go, <laughs> I, we can't have, we can't have Jamar open. <laughs> I'm like, as much as I would love to go in the middle, like I, we, we can't have Jamar be like, walk out. <laughs> You're headlining now though, aren't you? Starting to do one nighters and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So you Doing my first weekend in Kansas city. I'm excited about that. Back home. Yeah. Improv? Uh, no, they just opened up a new club there and, uh, it called? Yeah, uh, it's called the comedy club of Kansas city. That's a very intelligent name. Yeah, I mean, you know, very Googleable. Very concise. Yeah, very concise. You know exactly what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah. When when is that? Uh that is uh uh March fourteenth through sixteenth. Damn, I would have opened for you. But oh, man. I'm you're, in Ontario that weekend. You're booked up that weekend. I am I'm in Ontario. You know Ontario. what? I'll uh, I'll reach out to you. Uh I can't promise that I'll throw extra pay on top of what the No, club no, is that's paying. fine. I'll take whatever you give. <laughs> What was it fifty bucks to MC or something? Dude, it still is that. At, it's so at most shit. Clubs. It's, it's, it's horrible, dude. It's been like that since the nineties, dude. That's why I don't. And I don't it get. was actually it's actually less now than it was in the nineties because it was sixty five back like, in the day. At, at good clubs, you'll get a hundred a show to feature. At good clubs, a lot of there's a lot of clubs that still pay seventy five a show, and it's just like whew, it's just brutal. It's and the the worst part is that they pay the MC less, and I really feel like the MC is the most important person on the show next to the headliner. What I don't get. And uh, I hear that in Canada they have a completely different, you know, view of the MC. Uh, a lot of times here in the states, the MC they put the least experienced person. Yeah, which as is the a MC. dumb, dumb. And move. why would you make that the face of your show? Who's coming up between the comics and making yeah. sure like that doesn't yeah, make that's, sense? That, that, it's, it's an awful way to play the game. I I always feel like the more the guy with the more chops needs to MC the show because they need the they need to be able to hold it together for you of course you, you yeah. want the fucking guy panicking i'm sorry I, i'm not supposed to be good you know i don't know you're supposed to be good motherfucker. Yeah. you're all supposed to be good yeah you're the stitching that lines this show yeah <clears throat> so i always pay the mc in the middle the same amount of money okay well, that's cool uh at jam jack tory what is your biggest issue that you have with the entertainment industry right now my biggest issue it's hmm I feel like you don't really there. I don't know if it's the entertainment industry. I think it's just you don't really have any real friends in this business. You have colleagues that you're cool with, mm-hmm. but you don't really have any friends in this business. And if and if you do, they're you know it's very rare. 
They're not going to be. It, I mean, it, there's a. It's very clicky. It's always been clicky, and yeah. I've never been clicked up with anybody ever. Yeah. So I watch it, it gets, happen. Do you think it gets harder? I mean, the longer it's got to be harder, the longer that your career flourishes, right? Because you have, you know, back in the day, you have your open mic buddies and you have your crew. I mean, it's you know, yeah. Then you all, you're not all going to move forward. Yeah. So people start dropping off, and yeah. then, you know, and then while you're while you're making it, you 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 have the people that are trying to take you down or trying to talk shit about you the whole time, hmm. and discredit you whatever way they can. So that happens, and you're like, whatever, dude. I mean, if you're gonna waste your energy on trying to bring me down, you you if you did that much for yourself, you yeah. might have moved forward. Invest that energy into something yeah. else. <clears throat> so I think my beef with the energy with the industry is that. Uh, there's no loyalty in it. There's no, the people, and I mean the industry part, not even just yeah. the comics. I mean like the industry part, they will pretend to be your friends mm-hmm. until they don't need to be your friend anymore. And when they're not your friend, they don't tell you they're not your friend. They just act like they're not your friend. It sucks. It sounds like you've had a couple, yeah, experiences. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm in the process of that experience right now. I'm like, wow, I didn't even know we weren't friends anymore. You know oh, what I mean? Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I that's really shitty. Yeah. Yeah. It's shitty that you find out this way. It's like, look, you could tell me that we're not gonna work together anymore, mm-hmm. but don't pretend that we were friends if if you were just fucking faking it from the start. Because I'm not one of those guys. I can't fake it like that. I'm like, if I say we're friends, we're friends. It's that's yeah. really the bottom line. If I got your back, I got your back. Yeah. Simple as that. It's not about if you can help me or not. It's just uh, we're friends. That's what you do. Yeah. Like each other, good people. Yeah. Like to, yeah, link up with like-minded people. Yeah. That's how it works. And, uh, you know, uh, so it's whatever. Fuck it, you know? Yeah. But, like, in... in See, that... You I, can get caught up paying too much attention to what you don't have or what you what you think I you think should have. I think it's very easy to do that. There's and, a lot of, you know, a lot of people, I mean, yeah. I think every comic is guilty of it at some yeah. point where they're like, they're starting to see, you know, uh, a friend or a colleague start to get this or that. And you're like, well, what, how come I'm not How did I get this? overlooked? Yeah, how did I, like, how am I not in the mix or whatever? It's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, it's I, I've, I've come to this realization though. I'm just going to focus on what I do have and what I do have is so much more than I ever thought I would have. Of course. That I can't dwell on what's not happening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, dude, looking back at those open mics... In they were. All, I, I loved all out. of them. I loved all of. I loved every minute but did of the you, process. But did you see? Like, I mean, you know, we all hope to to get to uh, a level where you know you're touring the world and stuff like that. Like yourself. No, but, I didn't but even think do you, that. Do you see? Where did you see yourself? I said, as long as I'm making a living, and I didn't mean like, uh, uh, you know, I just meant like a living. Like I didn't have to work for somebody, and I knew that my rent would be paid. That dude, that's exactly where I'm at. I, I haven't worked a day job. Um, uh, you were a waiter when I first met you, weren't you? Working at Starbucks. Yeah. 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 And now... Uh, it's a great feeling. It's fucking liberating. It's and amazing. It's all, Since 2012, about, yeah. I've been doing comedy full time. Yeah. It's all about these little steps. And I always, people say, what's your goal? I go, I set all these little little goals so that I can achieve them. When you achieve the little goal, you feel like you've done something. Yeah. Don't fucking keep... Keep your eyes on the prize, but set a, set a, a little bunch of bonuses on the way. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I did that. Bam. Yeah. Bam. No, Bam. I definitely, I, I try to definitely appreciate and, and be grateful for any <clears throat> small victories. You got to count your small victories. Otherwise, like this industry, it's like, it's easy to get down and be like, oh, yeah. I should be doing this or that or, or and, whatever. And, you know, you want to, I want to, you know, the hardest thing you, you can, the, the one of the most, uh, uh, the trickiest things I have is that I want to be like, I did this and I did that, but I don't want to be the guy to say I did this and I did that. When I see them making a big deal over somebody else doing something that I know I did already, and I'm like, how come it wasn't a big deal when I did it, but when this fucking person does it, it's a huge deal. I'm like, it doesn't make sense to me, and I'm like, whatever. Yeah. It's a cool kids crew. You know, if you're, if you're in with them, you're, you're popular, and if you're not, then it doesn't matter what the fuck you do or say. Yeah. Interesting. It's like high school. It's just like high it's school. It's pretty, yeah. It's very yeah. much like high school. I'm literally falling right back into the place I was in in high school. Like, it was like, everybody liked you, but uh, nobody really cared. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was like, hey, it's Russell. Yeah, he's cool. He's cool. He's cool. I like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Want, does he want to come? No, don't, fuck, don't invite him. Don't invite him. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, come on. Just go in the room. Uh, this uh, last question comes from uh, Gage Tiarina. Uh, we touched upon this a little bit, but um, what was your first open mic like? What was your first year of, of comedy like? My first open mic, um, I think 
I, you get five. I got five minutes, and I think I did three and a half, maybe. I had a three minute uh, open mic for my first spot. Yeah, yeah, about that, and and it was terrible. Uh, it, you know what they, you don't realize when the first time you go do stand up is because you know if you're funny with your friends, you don't realize how much background noise there is around you and how many other things are going on. Oh, you're so <clears throat> hyper aware of everything. Yeah, I remember the first time I did the open mic. I remember I was like. Oh my God, my voice is the only thing in this room right now. Yeah. You're hearing it coming through speakers. You're like, oh, that, this is okay. I did not see this coming. Yeah. And uh, I, I just remember I got one chuckle and I was like, okay, I got to laugh. That's good. Go. Get so that, off. So that's all you needed. That's was, all I needed. Just to push you to that next spot. Yeah. And I was like, and then the second time I did it, I remember I did two and a half minutes. <laughs> yeah. I went even shorter. And then the third time, for some reason, I was, I killed. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. How did I do that? Yeah. The first time I went on, I had, a, and I'm sure I really didn't kill. I remember it as killing. You remember it as doing really well. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I didn't kill. I have footage that I used to have on YouTube. I took down years ago, but it was my first. I open love when mic people set. do that shit nowadays. Oh, I dude. get like dudes or, or comics just is like send, sending me in their DMs, like, "Yo, I, I did stand up for the first time. Check out my set. I put it on YouTube." I go, "Why would you do that, dude? It's the worst <clears throat> thing you can like, do." Like, what do you think? It just takes one show and that's it? No, you fuck. I think that the only reason to to, to have it up, and this was is literally some people back home were just like curious to see any progress at all. Like he got on stage. Yay. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I remember like I had a pretty good set, but I was, I've always been like overconfident with my stuff. I've always been like, <laughs> well, this is great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I was, ne- I never had the confidence. Yeah. Yeah. It was something. Had to build, 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 build. I still don't have it. I mean, I have it when I'm in front of my audience, but when I'm in front of somebody else's audience, my confidence goes back out the window. Really? Yeah, I have to fake it. It's you're, not real. I, well, I'm starting to learn you're a pretty good faker. Well, no, like if in comfortable surroundings, I can be me. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like when I do the stuff at the store with you guys, yeah. I, I quite enjoy well, that. So, I mean, you're one of our favorite guests on I, Kill Tony. I, I like doing the quick quips and shit like that. Yeah, and, and it's like, it's one of those shows where it's heavily rewarded. If you like, if you yeah. get in there... It's yeah. like with like little zingers. People yeah. are like, okay, yeah, this is. Those we're are my favorite things this. to do. Those are my favorite things. It's my way of just showing I have the chops. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. It's a yeah, little flex game. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Let's get into this final segment: sax talk. Yeah, whip out your sax. Oh, sax talk. This the new one. This is the new that one. Is fucking pretty, isn't it pretty? Wow. Yeah. That is sexy. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> well, no sax talk. Do you know I uh, I tried playing sax. I think it was in, might have been in high school or in grade school, but remember I had a reed and everything. Was it an alto or was it a tenor? It was, it was an alto. That's okay. one alto, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, the littler one. The yep. tenor is the giant one. Uh, the baritone is the giant one. The tenor has the gooseneck where it's like that, got that curve yeah, yeah, in no, it. No, no, no. It was this kind. Yeah, is there a guy. smaller one than that? Uh, well, there's a soprano, but that's Kenny G, like the longer yeah, no, no, one. No. Then it was, it was, an it was probably this one. I couldn't figure it out, but yeah, heck yeah. I had to get the reed wet. That's all I remember. Of course, you got. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And I was not a fan of that. I was like, well, it's it, it can be pretty gross. Like I, I I forget that I have to do it, and I sometimes accidentally am making eye contact with somebody while I do it. Uh huh. Yeah, and they're like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, sorry, I gotta I gotta, I gotta wet get my thing. reed. Wet. I gotta get my reed wet." So. <laughs> Yeah, read. It's wet. so funny. Like uh, it's like I, like the technical things with saxophone. Like, I gotta get my reed wet, and then it's considered a sexy instrument once you start playing. I remember but, when you got this one, you posted it on your Instagram, and I was like, "Damn, that is a nice looking sax." Dude, I'm Menchi Music hooked uh, hooked me up. I'm super grateful. Does it sound good too? Like, does it play like a brass it, one or it? Yeah. Um, is this brass? Uh, I actually don't know what this is actually made out of. Um, potato skins. Potato skins. Hidden skins. Hidden skins. I don't know why I'm getting seductive right <laughs> so, now. So seductive. Yeah. Hey, hey, boy, what's that sex made out of? Hey, what's that? What hey. is that? Smoke? Is that the old is that, smoke is stack? That, is that gun metal? What is that? That's yeah. nice. So Russell is going to share a story of a sexual encounter, and I'm going to play some sweet, sweet sax underneath to paint it up. Some sweet, sweet sax. Whenever you're ready, my friend. So uh, <clears throat> I have so many. What do you want? Gross, dirty? Fun? Sure. Anything. I, mean, I got a bunch. I don't know. Yeah, gross or dirty. I mean, people tend to like those just because. Uh, oh, I got a really good one. They're going for it. Here All we right. go. Great. So uh, you let me know when you're ready. I was in, uh, I was on the road. I was in Ohio somewhere. I don't want to be specific. And uh, I met this young lady, and she came back to the hotel. 
And at the time, I was on a regiment of Mu- <laughs> Metamucil. <laughs> so I remember when she came back to the hotel room, and uh, we did it. We had the intercourse. And then we were going to go to bed, so I drank my Metamucil, as I usually do, (laughs) before I went to bed. And uh, anyway, we wake up, and you know, it's morning sex time. So, uh... It's, wow, it was a long one. It was, uh, it was the old morning pokies and stuff, so she, uh, you know, I slide it in from the side, you know, as you do when you're beside the woman. And then um, she gets on top. She's riding. And while she's riding, I start getting gas pains from the, from the Mucinex. I mean, the uh, a Metamucil. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, God, I feel a gas pain. Do you know those fucking awful gas pains? So then I'm like, all right, here, here let's change positions. So I say, I get behind her now. And uh, so I get behind her and I figure while I'm in position behind her, you know, you're on your knees as they are. I have this move where if I need to fart in front of somebody new, I will cough and fart at the same time. So I was like, all right, this is a great opportunity. So I went <clears throat> and I farted. Yeah. And then uh, we start having the sex. And then I'm like, just, I realize I got it. I, I, my gas is too bad. So I said, Hey, let's just take a, take a little break for five minutes, huh? And she goes, yeah, okay. I'm going to go to the bathroom. So she goes to the bathroom and I get up and I look at the bed. <laughs> and when I coughed and farted, I shit the bed. <laughs> But because of the Metamucil, it was like mad grainy <laughs> and it looked like mud, like dry mud. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I'm like trying to smell it because I'm like, is that from me or is there actually mud on the bed? So I'm like, oh, fuck. So then she comes out of the bathroom and sees me looking and she goes, oh, my God, what is that? I go, and she goes, how did mud get on the bed? I go, I don't know. What the fuck? Right. <laughs> She goes, we didn't have our shoes on the bed, did we? And I go, no, so weird. <laughs> so I go to the bathroom, I get a wet towel, and I wipe the bed off. <laughs> and then I go into the, then I go, I'm just going to, I go to the, to the restroom. And now the, the hotel room is quiet. And the restroom, as you know, are very echoey. And, and I sat down and I started farting <laughs> so loud. <laughs> that I knew you could hear it outside the bathroom door, so I had to acknowledge it, but I had to do it in a funny way, so it was like, Froom! you could do my farts. Every every fart, it was like, and I'd go, oh, oh, hello, here we go, one more, there we go, ow. So I had to do that. <laughs> and then while I'm sitting on the shitter, I look down, as you do sometimes, I look down, at my ankle and there's shit on my ankle because of the position I was in when I sharded. I was in this position, so my asshole. And the way it looked on the bed, it looked like a like a, a gun blast. It was like, poof. it had a trajectory to it. <laughs> so I uh, realized at that point, like, fuck, I shit the bed. And then I had to jump in the shower and clean up and everything. And then I got back to the bed and I put a towel on in that area. I still finished, I want you to know. <laughs> So that's one of my road stories. <laughs> that was my sex on the road. That was an incredible sax talk. <laughs> <laughs> that had every element of that story that I wanted. <laughs> sex sharts <laughs> trying to mask it yep. and getting away with it that was the best dude part. the fact that the girl 
said, how did Mud get in here? And I was is like, so great. And I went like this. Did you have your shoes on the bed? Yeah, you start blaming her <laughs> I immediately. flipped it on her. Yeah, yeah. Did you have your fucking shoes on what the bed? Are you, what are you, an animal? This is yeah. gross. Yeah. No, they're right there. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll go check. <laughs> dude, that's amazing. Ohio. Ohio. Man. Well, dude, uh, this has been a blast. Thank you so much for uh, coming to my, my, my one better. I like it. Yeah, man. I like it. Jeremiah Wonder Studio. I like what you've done with the place. Yeah, right? Um, who's that? Is that... Uh, yeah, that guy. Wait, who does, it doesn't even look like you in that picture. No? It looks like... What's that actor's name? Well, it'll come to me later, but... Some actor. I like it. Some actor. Some actor. And he always kind of plays a snarky kind of guy. Um, I think he was on... Uh, I was on a sitcom playing like the, you, know, you go the, and he had that fucking look on his face. He has dark hair. Matt uh, LeBlanc? No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, I th- I'm trying to think if he was on Friends. He he seems like he would have been a character on Friends. He might have been a character on Friends. Maybe. Like some guy that worked with Rachel or something. Oh, okay. Brad Pitt, he was. A- no, no. <laughs> no, his brother Arm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, his demented brother, Arm. Yeah, Armpit, the lesser known of the pits. I never get the attention. I go on auditions all the time. My brother just keeps booking stuff. Ugh, dick. Ugh, he's the worst. I, I, call- couldn't, I could have been the lead in Z Nation. Yeah. Come on. If Tom Cruise could play a Japanese, I don't see why I can't play a zombie. Yeah, come on, man. Let me have a chance here. <laughs> Do you have a uh, do you have anything you'd like to plug or anything like that? When is this up? airing right now? Uh, a week from uh, uh, not this Monday, but the following Monday. So not it's going to air on the eighteenth. Uh, it'll be uh, yep on the eighteenth. Okay, well, all the good things I wanted to plug will be done by then. <laughs> so no, perfect. I'll be in Boston at the Wilbur. Um, yeah. I think the first weekend of March. No, 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 that's April. Where the fuck am I gonna be? I'll Where tell you right now, kiddo. Where is gonna be? Um, I will be in Chicago at the Schomburg Improv, uh, March one, two, three, and I will be in uh, the Grattan Resort and Casino in Grattan Resort and Casino in California. In California on the twenty second of February. Twenty second of February. And followed by. And followed by. The Silver Legacy Casino in Reno on the 23rd of February. Silver Legacy Casino. Do you have any more dates you would like to plug? I think that's all I got for now, kids. That's all he's got for now. <laughs> I looked a little echo on. Oh. Yeah. Thanks for doing the show, buddy. Thank you. I've been meaning to do this for years, uh, or at least a while. No, and, I appreciate uh, it. And no, I didn't we, want to- we found a time. We, we uh, yeah. Yeah. We're you made it, it. You re- made it happen, re- really. Hey, man, recording at night. I wanted to accommodate. I was like, let's freaking do this. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for doing putting it, up with my bullshit, oh, f- dude. I would love to. And uh, anytime. And I felt bad because he texted me or called me, and I didn't answer. He was like, "That's cool, man." I'm like, "Hey, hey, no, 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 not like that." I just was fucking tied up. I couldn't answer. <laughs> well, I you got all it. emo. I no, don't no, want to no. bother you. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry to bother you, hey, fuckhead. Hey, sorry to bother you, but uh, I'd love for you to do my podcast. No, that that's a problem with text messages. You yeah. can't read the tone. Yeah, I I lost my signal with you. Uh, I was driving through the canyons, and I was like, I was like, I'll hit you. Like, ah, that's cool. Like I'll yeah. hit you like that. I'll hit you later. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh no no no, not like, like no, that. No 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 no. Oh, he's sad. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, I didn't mean to upset you there. Oh, Jeremy. I gotta help, help the saxophone kids make a wish come true. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Jeez, so sad. Well, uh, dude, I I've always appreciated. Um, uh, you've always been super encouraging to me, which I really appreciate. And uh, you've been involved with pretty much every show that I've been involved with. Kill Tony, Rose Battle, the Comedy Jam, Stand oh, yeah. Up on the Spot. You've done it here in LA done in Montreal so it was fun I appreciate you man yeah I'm I'm open to always doing things yeah buddy it's good for you heck yeah thanks Jeremiah Watkins thanks Russell Peters (laughs) 